I love this comment. It's challenged me. It's helped me understand better who I am. I made a video with my wife a while back called Born in 1981, Do We Count as True Millennials? Joaquin 1977, who was apparently born the same year as my parents were married in the first Star Wars, said, oh no, I guess I'm already wrong. He says, quote, I'm born in 1979. I've never considered myself Generation X either. There was a glut of Generation X movies in the, in the early 90s and the characters were all young adults. Meanwhile, I was still in elementary and middle school during the early 90s. I was in high school and college with people born roughly from 76 to 84. I'm not a big fan of the millennial bracket either. I like Xenial or Oregon Trail for us. When people started naming a micro generation for those of us born during the release years of the original Star Wars trilogy, trilogy it just clicked for me." And I like that. You know, that, that is a good point. So the first Star Wars, original, 1977. The final one of the original trilogy, 1983. I was born in 81. I'm in that span there. And as I was thinking about it, yeah, the, the Oregon Trail, I mean, it's part of, if you grew up in the United States and were born between those years, you know, like you hear Oregon Trail and automatically you smile because in computer class, that was like the highlight of like school. I don't know. I get to play Oregon Trail. Can I make it to where I cross the river in time before my 45 minutes is up? You know, and that's after you did all the other educational stuff you had to do first, like type or whatever it is. I get to play Oregon Trail. So yeah, that speaks volume. Here's another one though I wanna put in there for people born between 1977 and, and, and 83 roughly. This kind of micro generation between the Generation X and between the, the Millennials is Saved by the Bell. See, that's a big, big part of, of my generation. Because now the original like Disney version, Miss Bliss, where they were mysteriously in Indiana, I believe premiered in like 1989-ish. But then the second season was like the real first season where they were now in California and from ninth grade to senior year. That was what, from 19, like 1989 to 1993, something like that. And then of course they had the college years too, which was only 13 seasons and all that. But ultimately, the six seasons of Saved by the Bell line up with the people who were born between 77 and, and 83 in a way that part of your growing up was an absolute exposure to Saved by the Bell. Not only did you see every episode when it originally aired on Saturday morning, but then on TBS and all the other reruns, you'd come home from school, you'd be doing your homework, it's, it's like a two hour block of Saved by the Bell, you change the channel, and what's on the channel? Saved by the Bell. So it's a big part uh, of our experience. So I think, yeah, I mean, if we wanna talk about a micro generation, we can, we can be called, uh, the original Star Wars, uh, we could be also, I think, save, the Saved by the Bell generation. Uh, because it's funny, because like people who are much younger than me, like that I work with, when I say Saved by the Bell, like, they, they don't really know what that even means. But again, I'm of a generation where I was alive when at least the last Star Wars movie came out. I remember it. In fact, you know, in there, in the early 80s, mid 80s, when I was still just a couple years old, four years old. I mean, I've got three Star Wars action figures from when I guess I turned four in 1985, but they were still making action figures from Return of the Jedi from 1983. So I have C-3PO, I have one of the Ewoks, I have one of the, the guards, and I still I own those action figures, all because I turned five during that time. It was still a very big deal for me, and I got to experience memories of that in, that I could go back to, I remember it happening, uh, in the same way I can remember actually E.T. because when E.T. aired in, uh, it came out in June of 82, they kept bringing it back because back then like video rental stores weren't really a thing yet, really. So you just had to wait for it to come out the next summer. And I can remember when it came out again the following summer in June of 83 and I saw it when I was two years old. It's one of my first memories. And I remember at the end when Elliot I say goodbye to E.T. and I'm, an, I'm a two year old kid, I'm crying. I clearly remember walking out of the theater and my mom saying, it's okay, you can, you can call grandma and tell her what happened. And as an arbitrary solution, we got home, I, I called grandma, E.T. had to go back to the spaceship. <laughs> so like, I can remember that. Like, I was alive and I can remember E.T. being in theaters. So I think this is so cool. I, I think, yeah, this is therapeutic for me. I already feel better talking about this because I arbitrarily assign myself as a millennial just because I'm supposed to, because we're supposedly the firstborn of that generation. But I mean, for one thing though, I, 
I hate phones. I do not like smartphones. If I could not have a smartphone, I would not have one. I do not like this. I don't, I don't like the identity of it. I don't like, you know, so I feel so many people, especially of, that are younger than me, depend on this for confirmation of their identity. They're posting on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, you know, basically asking for confirmation. Do I matter? Am I pretty? Am I cool? Am I funny? Did you, did you like what I did this weekend? See that picture? I'm like, I don't need confirmation from other people. Like, I know I'm not that awesome. <laughs> I know I'm not that cool. I don't need to be. I don't need to, to ask for confirmation of my identity. And when I think of phones, I often think of that. And just overcomplicating things. I'm a pretty simple person. I'm not, see, I think if I were a true millennial, as the stereotype goes, I would like be attached to my phone. And I really, honestly, the only thing I really do with my phone is I just check the next day to see how my videos are doing that I published the night before. So for so many reasons, I, I'm not a millennial, but Generation X, no, that's not me either. As far as those stereotypes is relating to those movies made in the 90s, no. So yeah, uh, for me, it was about, I was in high school when grunge music was, was relevant. I grew up seeing every episode of Saved by the Bell when it aired and then in reruns. And I was alive for at least one of the original Star Wars movies. And as I'm saying this, it makes me wonder though, what else? What else defined this mini generation besides the original Star Wars movies, besides Saved by the Bell? What's unique about our experience? I mean, I guess we could probably even talk about the internet. You know, for us, born between 77 and 84, when the internet became, you know, it came out in like 97, but we really started becoming more relevant like circa 2000, we were the generation who was in high school and college. And I think that also has a reflection of who we are compared to the younger generations who, like my own kids, the internet had been around for a while before they were even born. So I think that's interesting too, that we were still developing, turning into adults as the internet was being born. So I think that in itself, and of course, also we could say the same with when 9-11 happened, the way the world changed and our perspective of it changed. For me, I was in college. And again, if you were born between 77 and 80, 83, you were likely in high school or college in those years, right around you becoming an adult. So there's, those are things off the top of my head. What did I leave off? I would love to talk more about this. And I think you want to. I think this is relevant enough. This is gonna be like, yeah, actually he's got me thinking. Well, turn those thoughts into action comment section right here.